Hello, origami enthusiasts. My name is Sigourney, and I am the Origami Llama. Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. As promised in my last video, today we will be going over how to fold a traditional Japanese origami crane. If you haven't seen my last video, I highly recommend you check it out for some context and background, and I will leave the link to it below in the description. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, as with any skill set, uh, repetition is important, so we'll be practicing today on three different cranes. Uh, you can choose whatever color or pattern you like, as long as it's a perfect square. Um, today's paper is uh, 6 by 6 inches. It's pretty standard, uh, and I recommend you start out with at least this size or bigger if you're just starting out. Uh, bigger paper is easier to work with, but anyway, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go diagonal to diagonal. Line them up carefully, making sure that you're taking your time. There is no rush. And the more perfect you get your folds, the more precise and lovely your model will turn out. Open that up. You're going to take the other diagonal corner, corner to corner. Now to lay down these creases, you can either use your nails, which I don't really have them, or you can use one of these handy dandy bone folders, is what they're called. This one is not actually made out of bone, but you can find them in most, most craft stores. Open that back up, turn it over here. So you've got two what are called mountain folds, which just means that the folds pop up or face upward like this. Now you're going to take this horizontal edge and fold it over to its other edge. Some people call this hot dog style, however you would like to term it. Now line those up carefully and lay down your crease. Again, either using your handy dandy bone folder or your fingernails. Open that up, same thing, side to side. And these are called valley folds. So we're going the opposite direction from our mountain folds, which makes sense, right? Mountains up, valleys down. So now that you've put in your mountain and valley folds, you're going to take all four corners and pinch them together into what we call a preliminary base. This is a super common starting base for a myriad of different origami models. Uh, as long as you have two layers on each side here, you will be set. Now, take one of the open edges here, and by open I just mean that there's space between them, and you're going to line that edge up right along your center line. Again, taking your time, being careful, we are not in a hurry. Do the same thing on the other side, meeting it to the center. and laying down your crease. Now you see that we have a triangle isolated on this top part. We're going to flip that triangle right over where those other two flaps meet, making sure that the point is lined up along the center line. Laying down the crease. Now you've got sort of a cobra shape in front of you. You're going to turn that over, and then you will open it up here, kind of like a baby bird's mouth, I like to say to the kiddos I teach. And you're going to create a diamond by folding this outer edge right down the center line here. So you'll do that on both sides. There we go, that's better. So now you have a nice diamond shape on this side. Flip it back over, take this triangle, fold it back upward, and unflip those flaps. And you'll notice you'll have that same 
um, diamond shape that we had on the other side. You're going to open that up, another bird's mouth if you will, and crease those inward like so. This is called a bird base, and it is also a super popular starting base for many origami models. So should match on both sides and you should have these little little leggies. You're going to make these leggies a bit slimmer, taking one layer of the outer edge here and folding it inward right on the center line. Now notice how I leave just the tiniest bit of space like a fraction of a millimeter in there. That's because when we inverse the fold later you're going to want just a tiny bit of space so that the papers don't overlap awkwardly. You'll get the feel for this as you keep practicing, but just know that it doesn't have to be exactly on the center line here, but very, very, very close. Now, take that other outer edge and match it. That's something I like about origami is the symmetry. Now, there are some really excellent asymmet um, yeah, asymmetrical models out there, but most of these, as with martial arts forms, etc., are going to have symmetrical patterns. So you've got this on this side, flip it over, and you guessed it, do the exact same thing. Folding that outer layer inward, and doing the same on the other side. Now you've got thinner leggies here, and notice how it opens right in this area here. You're going to open that up, and you'll see that you have a fold pre-made, and you're just going to flip that leg up right along that fold, if you can see what I'm doing here. Now you're going to inverse the fold here, so it was dipped down, you're going to Turn that into a mountain fold. Whoop. There, now you've got a tail. Open up this layer on the other side. Again, seeing that you've already got that crease predetermined for you, for you to uh, kick the other leg up. It's not really legs, as you'll see, but neck and tail. So this side we're going to turn into the head. You just inverse that fold like you did the other side. And you simply grab the beak area, making it as large or as small as you like. This will vary depending on the artist here. And crimp it downward like that. And you've got the head. Final step, you can do any number of things. Some people like to puff out the body, like me. And I just kind of leave the wings out like this. Some people leave the wings straight up. Other people like to add in an extra fold to give definition to those wings. So folding along here, puffing out the body. There you go. Origami crane. There are so many variants um, that honestly, as long as you get the basic pattern of it down, there's not a wrong way to do it. So let's keep going. We're going to fold all three of our crane models because, like I said, practice makes perfect and getting the rhythm of it will help you get that new skill down pat. So first things first, we go corner to corner, lay down our crease, open that up, corner to corner, carefully lining it up, take your time. Lay down your crease. Good. Now open it up so that those folds are mountain folds pointed upwards toward the sky. Now take your horizontal edge to your horizontal edge, matching them up very carefully, eyeballing it. 
There you go. And lay down the crease. Now I know origami can be pretty frustrating for beginners who aren't used to it. So I would like you to take your time here and really give yourself some credit for trying it. And keep at it. It took me quite a while to get my first crane down. So even if you're frustrated, just know I'm with you on that. <laughs> I've been frustrated by several models before and, and it will happen again in the future. Just have patience with yourself and know that you can do it. If five-year-olds in Japan can do it, you can do it. All right, making that preliminary base again. So you'll recall we pinched all four corners together. We've got two layers on each side. Take those closed layers and orient them towards the top and the open layers toward you. Now take that first open layer and fold it toward the middle. Do the same on the other side. You're going to get tired of hearing me say that. I apologize. It just is what it is. Lay your fold down. If you're a perfectionist, you can really just take your time crisping and creasing and making sure that everything is perfect. If you're a little bit more, I guess, slapdash like me, you'll be folding them like a ninja in no time. So take that corner, point it down, right where those flaps overlap. That is our line. And fold it into that cobra shape. Excellent. Now that you've got this, flip it over. Open it up. Bird's mouth style. Feed me. Okay, I know that's weird. <laughs> there we go. We're going to form that diamond shape in the middle. Folding these outer edges right down the center line. I think this part was probably one of the most difficult uh, bits for me to understand, uh, just looking at the drawing diagrams, or the, the drawn diagrams, I should say, when I was first learning. So hopefully having a moving representation of what this looks like makes it a little bit easier for you to follow. All right, flip that around. Flip that triangle oriented upward. Unflip your flaps. That sounds weird. Anyway, open up that, open up that layer and do the same thing you did on the other side, forming that same diamond shape. There. Now you can see that here's the body, here are the wings. You're going to take this edge here, fold it to the center. And as before, the same on the other three layers. Just folding it to the center, making those wee leggies that you've made a bit slimmer. Turn it over, same dealio. And remember, if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. You can make cranes out of almost anything. Old wrappers, plentiful packaging and paper, junk mail, you name it. So don't fret. Now that you've got these two slimmer leggies, you're going to open it up where the leggies meet the wings. Reverse fold there. There you go. So there is your tail. You're going to take this other appendage. Do the same thing. Ding it upward. 
crimping it. And sometimes I don't even finish folding all the way up. I'll just crook the head down right away and put my crease in just like that. There you go. You have made your second crane. Pat yourself on the back. Or perhaps it's still your first crane and, and, and we're still learning. That's okay too. No judgment here. Third crane, let's get to it. Corner to corner. If you're still with me, I congratulate you on your patience and your continued efforts. I just want you to know that you're doing a great job and I appreciate you. Thanks for sticking with it. Open it back up, corner to corner. Open her up. Good, now you've got those folds. Mountain fold upward, horizontal to horizontal. Same thing on the other side. All right. Now you will take those corners, give them a pinch, and have those closed layers pointed upward and the bottom layers pointed towards you. Take this edge here. Fold it right to your center line. Same on the other side. You'll have a kite shape in the middle. Now taking this corner, folding it down over where those other flaps make an edge. And you've got a cobra shape. Turn it back over. Open this whole section. And fold those outer edges to that center line. Et voila, turn it around, corner up, flaps out, peel this layer back, and again fold those outer edges right into the center line to make that diamond shape. There we go, edge to center. And do make sure it is on the side with the leggies. Same thing. Turn that over. Repeat. You've got it like this. Now open it up right here. Kick up the leg right where that base meets the uh, these long appendages. And this part here is why I said earlier that you'll want to leave just the tiniest little fraction of a millimeter of space between here and, and your center line because when you kick the leggy up 
and reverse the fold, you'll notice how you want just that small little gap of space so that you can properly reverse that fold without the papers crumpling and overlapping with one another. Make your head, just pull that beak bit down. Make an indent with your fingernail, your bone folder, however you like. Give it a crease. And ta-da! You've done it! You have mastered the ancient and sacred art of crane making. So I hope that tutorial was helpful. And I hope you've got a few cute little souvenirs to show for it. Uh, like I said, if you haven't seen my former video, I recommend checking out the link in the description. And if you found this informative and like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing and liking uh, my video. And again, thank you so much for being here and sticking with it. Proud of you. Take care, everybody.